it's me again. I just won't go away, will I? Well, at least it, not for the next 16 or 17 weeks uh, until we are all successful in this class together. Anyway, I wanted to show you how to organize the My Grades page in our Blackboard class. There is a little drop down menu that I'm showing you on the screen behind me. So if you're listening to this, you need to look at it instead. Um, there's a There are different ways to organize your grades, but what I need you to do is sort it in course order because I created these grades um, in course order so you can look at your RPs. So, so for instance, in the reaction paper video, I told you that you needed to keep track of how many reaction papers you've done and you can kind of pace yourself and schedule your, you know, reaction papers or your alerts on your phone or however you're going to manage your, um, your course for yourself this semester. You can keep up with what kind of reaction paper you need to do because here's one, two, three, four, five reaction papers that don't have a source included, an outside source that is. Um, if that's confusing to you, go back to that reaction paper video that I made for you so that it'll explain what an outside source is and what it's not. And then you have to have five um, reaction papers that do include an outside source. And so I have them listed all grouped together. So once you do one of these, you'll see a 10 out of 10 over here with a little comment bubble that you can click on and look at and read and, and you know, make note of and maybe make changes the next time you do a reaction paper or something. You know, if it's um, maybe if you turn in a reaction paper and it's a little too short the first time, I might be lenient and I might say, okay, I'm going to give you credit for this, but don't make it too short again because you can't get credit for a reaction paper that's less than 300 words, for instance. That might be a comment or a comment might be, you know, this is absolutely great. I think you should save it on the extra credit discussion board and tell students that, you know, this is how you should do an outside source or a good, a good model to, to work from, whatever. That might be a comment that I would make. So you need to always read your comments. And uh, this is the way that you can keep track of whether you have credit for sources or no sources. You can also keep track of whether I got it right. Like maybe you posted one with a source, but by the time I went back here to the grade book to record the grade, maybe I put it in the wrong place. And if I did, let me just say right now, I'm sorry, it wasn't intentional. And you can text me and let me know, hey, my week three reaction paper had a source or I thought it did. Uh, will you check it for me again? And I will be happy to fix it if I make that mistake. And I, I make that mistake mistake three or four times a semester, unfortunately. Um, not for everybody, but three or four students a semester um, have to text me and say, um, wasn't that an outside source? You know, so uh, I'm sorry ahead of time if it happens to you, but I'm I'm nice. You can text me and let me know and I'll be happy to, to fix it. I don't, you know, if I make a mistake, no, we're not going to leave the mistake as is. I'm going to fix it. OK, um, and then also you can see your quizzes one through however. And if you if you sort by course order, you will see all of the quizzes lumped together. Quiz one through 17 or actually quiz one through 16 and then the last quiz. And you'll be able to keep track. Oh, how many 10 out of 10s do I have? How many zeros out of 10 do I have? How many exempt scores? Because sometimes I go in and like click on exempt and there's like a little gray bubble or something that shows up. So if you skip a quiz, and you had a zero, I might exempt that so you don't think that it's going to like count against you. Because remember, go back and look at the quiz video, video three, um, so you'll know about the quiz scores. I'm only going to count the 10 highest scores. And then all your projects will be listed together. Let me get me out of the way here. So project one, two, oh, there's supposed to be a three there. Don't know why it's not there. But uh, project one, two, three, and four. And then uh, also you'll have midterm test, you'll have final test all listed together. So you can see your classes, your grades are like grouped together to, um, so you can eat more easily. Really, the, the big deal is for you to keep track of what, um, reaction papers, what type of reaction paper you have a grade for, and what the comments are. You can easy by sight look at them grouped like this. So sort by course order and things will be just um, clearer when you're trying to figure out uh, wh where you are, what your progress is in the class. And let me take a second to um, to talk about midterm grade averages. So by the time we get to midterm, uh, you will have you will have had seven reaction paper opportunities and eight quiz opportunities. I'm going to count five reaction papers or 50 points. 
and I'm going to count your five highest quiz scores or 50 points hopefully you've made that much. So please make sure that between now and midterm, which is like March 4th, something like that, please make sure that between now and midterm you do at least five of your 10 required reaction papers. And you do, you know, get 10 out of 10 at least five times on your seven or eight quizzes that we're going to have between now and then so that I can use, you know, a high amount of points and you'll have a really high midterm average. I'm also going to use projects one and two. Those projects are going to be due and graded and back to you before midterm and the midterm test, of course. And so 300 of our 600 points in class are going to be used to calculate your midterm grade. And then, of course, 600 of the 600 points um, that are due in class are going to be used for your final grade but we will be smack dab in the middle with exactly 300 half the points possible um, by that midterm grade average so please be aware I'm only going to use five reaction papers and you'll have seven opportunities if you only have done three by the time we get to week seven then you're going to have a 30 out of 50 instead of a 50 out of 50 on reaction papers and don't do that try to do as many as possible try to do five um, between now and week seven, and then try to do all those quizzes. And I'll just count the highest five scores that you have for that um, midterm grade average. And then of course the two projects and the midterm. Okay, so text me with questions. I will see you in the next video, bye.